Ahl al-Kitab, our people of Revelation. Uh, we marry from them, they marry from us, we eat it from them, they eat it from us. And uh, have there been misunderstanding? Yes. It's a verse that is used often. Do not take the Jews and the Christians as their as your awliya. Uh, as, as, as I said uh, earlier, it is talking about specific Jews, it's ayah khasa, not ayah amma. Specific about five specific individuals who actually betrayed the trust that they signed on. Why am I saying this? Again, back to Hadith, the Prophet married Maria. Maria was a Christian. The Prophet married Hafsa. Hafsa was Jewish. And the Quran says that marriage is built on mawadda and rahmah, affection and love. Very simple stuff. And these Christians who lived in Medina were considered husbands and wives and, and children. Very simple stuff. And the Quran does not see them as do not take them as a friend. If you can take her as a wife, you cannot take her as a friend. But God said something's wrong in the mind. Number two, if you read the seerah of the Prophet, the, the life of the Prophet, he had so, so, so many Jewish friends. Especially Jewish, they were more Jewish than Christians in Medina. They were friends. I mentioned earlier to my Muslim students a story. Uh, three days after the Prophet died, a woman came into the city crawling. And the first man she saw, she told him, obviously Muhammad died, and why didn't you tell me? And this man said, why are you saying so? She said, I live at the outskirts of the city, just there, and uh, I missed Muhammad for three days, and nothing would prevent Muhammad from coming to me except death. So the man said, what do you mean? And the woman said, well, I'm 93 years of age. Muhammad came to my house every day in the morning and every day in the evening, cleaned my home for me, prepared my food for me. And I have not eaten for the last three days except what he prepared for me. I said, only his death would prevent him from coming to take care of me. Wasn't this a friendship and love and affection and catering personality and embracing? If Muhammad understood the Quran to say, don't take the Jews as your friends, he would not have catered for that Jewish woman. That she missed him. She missed him. There's so many examples that one could mention to say that ayah is taken out of context by Muslims and non-Muslims alike, including the Taliban and exclusivist, literally Muslims, who interpret that verse as if it is the paradigm of the whole Quran, and take one third of Quranic verses about that subject. About the idea of the beating of women, I promise you to say it very, 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 very briefly. <laughs> the verse says, the verse says, and your spouses, your wives, for whose nushus you worry about, nushus is the Quranic juristic name or term referring to be a betrayer, the one who betrays the trust, the one who has sexual relations out of marriage, and disrespectful, and who handles money in a deceptive way. So the Quran says, if this is your wife, speaking to a specific man, what do you do? And the Quran says, number one, why go one? Remind them spiritually. That is called Ida. You go to the Masjid and you do Ida when the Imam says and give you a spiritual reminder of God. What a ring. <laughs> but that's not a Quranic term. Okay, the Quran said, number one, you say to your wife, honey, this is really not acceptable. God is not pleased with us. Remind her of God's favors upon her. And this is spiritually not what you would expect from her. Number two, the Quran says, and separated from them in sexual relations. You don't have a sexual relationship with her at that mark. Wait, why? So you, you can think about it, she can think about it. A time for separation. You call it in psychology and in, in counseling distance. Sometimes we do separation within the same house, one in one room, one in the other room. For she for her to think, for him to think or in two different houses. So he travels, he travels, a distance. That's what the Quran says. 
the question if that does not work, what do we go on? Okay? This is Ribu Hon, was interpreted by some Muslim scholars to mean beat. Because it does have the word beat in it. So those who misunderstand the verse rightly do it. Rightly do it. However, if you take what I said, Quran interpreting Quran, Hadith interpreting Quran, the actions of the Prophet, and language, you come up with absolutely different analogy. Now, what did the Quran say? The Quran say, Either you live together with ma'ruf, with goodness, or you separate with goodness. So if there's a problem between the husband and the wife, the Quran says, not be there up, just separate with ma'ruf. The Quran says that marriage is built on mawadda and rahma, love and affection. And anyone can tell me if love and affection go hand in hand with beating? Obviously not. Number three, the Prophet himself asked, strange is your matter, O men, of my ummah, of my community. He used the word lafama. You sort of strike them in the morning, and you ask them for intimate relations in the evening. So it does not make sense that you ask her for an intimate relationship and love, yet you just hit her. It does not make sense. Then he said after that, ما أكرمهن إلا كريم وما أهانهن إلا لئيم. No one honors his wife but a man of good nature, and no one disrespects his wife but a man of bad to a rotten nature. Defective, completely defective. Then he said after that, أما علمتم هبنت you know that your that wives your wives are your shakat your partners. The last thing is, do we know of any specific case where the Prophet legitimized, institutionalized the concept of beating? Actually, we know zero from the account of the life of the Prophet. So putting all of these Quranic verses together, the paradigm we spoke about together, and hadith together, it cannot mean, but something else. So we go back and seek refuge in language. Since we have 37 meanings for the word daraba, like in the, in the Quran it says, wa daraba fil ard, you daraba in the land. What does that mean? Daraba lahu mathala. Whenever I give you an example of something, the Quran is the word daraba. It is Arabic language, very rich, as we said earlier. So, out of 37 meanings, seven meanings refer to the word separate. Going back to what Islam says about marriage, what the Quran says about marriage, it makes sense. That if a spiritual reminder does not work, that distance and separation does not work, the Quran says just move on. Absolute dissolution of marriage. Based on the ayah that says that either you live together with love or you separate from love and respect. That's what I'm talking about. When you put all of this together, I need to I have to finish, I have to finish. <laughs> well, that, 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 that's sorry. it. Okay, my friends, <laughs> please add me to your Facebook and discuss there. Yeah. <laughs>